On social media, we're seeing crash after airplane crash. Well, are they actually increasing? Let's find out in this special Air Venture episode of In the Hangar. Welcome to In the Hangar. We are at the Flying Eyes booth. If you go to flyingeyesoptics.com, use our discount code, taking off all caps, one word, you'll get 10% off. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Schaefer. We'd also like to thank Clemens Insurance for Clemens bringing ins us to ClemensInsurance.net. That's right. Uh, we've got a very special guest today. It's a hole that we didn't We didn't want to fill, we but we fill. filled it really well. And, and for those who know, I've, we've got a history on this channel with, with Richard McSpadden, who was the vice president of Air Safety Institute of AOPA. And, and we sorely miss uh, Richard. Mike, uh, you could never be Richard, but you can be Mike. And w welcome to leading the Air Safety Institute. Thank you very much. I just started three weeks ago, uh, three and a half weeks ago in the, the new position. Uh, no stranger to AOPA. I've been there about seven years. And just like a, a general aviation, you'll have to be nice and tight with this. All right. Sorry. There we oh, go. There yeah. Go. So no stranger to AOPA. I've been there about seven years, and uh, but I've been in this job for about three and a half weeks. And, and I know there was a long search for uh, a, a Air Safety Institute senior vice president. And uh, when Mark asked me to do it, I was humbled and honored and-, and uh, Maybe was, scared a little bit? Absolutely, it's an yeah. overwhelming job, but uh, you know, I've got GA in my roots. Yeah, so, you do. Uh, and, uh, and I've been safe my whole life, and uh, that's a good thing, so. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I, so GA in your roots, tell us about your background in, in aviation. Well, I started, I uh, got my license in high school. I was 18 oh, years old. Oh, wow, yeah, all right. Uh, okay. Civil Air Patrol, and, and um, it was, uh, dream that I had from probably about the age of nine and uh, you know I could I was one of those kids I picked up a flying magazine and I read it cover to cover and got another one and I wrote Mr. Piper a letter <laughs> and I was maybe wow. 11 and I asked for the cool poster of the new Cherokee 160 I think had just been released and he sent me one. It took a month, you know. Every day I said, "Hey, mom, did anything come in the mail?" Oh, nice. So that I was, is really cool. Yeah, though. I was kind of eating up with it early on. And you still have that poster? I don't, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. We should get him a recreated 160 yeah. poster. Yeah. So I got my license in high school and uh, went right off to Embry Riddle in Daytona Beach. Got a got a degree, and I was planning on going to the airlines. And I walked into Riddle thinking, "Well, I got my private already. I'll get the rest of the ratings, and I'll pick the airline that I want to fly." <laughs> and that wasn't the truth. I learned about the the 15... blissfulness of youth. <laughs> yes, I learned about the 1,500 hours. And long story short, is I ended up switching majors into an engineering curriculum, and I applied to the Navy and got a, a pilot spot. So I spent uh, 27 years oh, flying wow. off aircraft carriers for the Navy. F-18s? Oh, wow. No, it was called the S-3 Viking. Kind of today's uh, uh, torpedo bomber, a little two-engine oh, wow. jet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was fun. All right, I, I got to ask right now before we go for. So, um, what what one flight really st from off the carrier sticks in your mind? Uh, that's easy. Okay. Um, so, um, in in carrier aviation, uh, every landing is graded by uh, specially trained pilots called landing signal officers. And every grade as assigned is uh, then put on a board in your squadron ready room. It's called the greeny board. And everybody aspires to get a green tile for each landing. And after a month, there's 30 or 40 tiles on your name. So the greeny board is a very public report card. Right. Uh, green is an OK pass. That's a, a 4.0. Uh, and uh, the fair passes are uh, yellow, and that's not bad. And I was constantly getting yellows, and I wanted to, you know, get some more greens. So I was really working hard. And it was a night flight off of the uh, USS America. And uh, it, and all night flights on a carrier are an ILS, ILS approach. So it's a nice, stabilized, six-mile approach to the carrier until you pick up the meatball visually, and, and you call the ball, and then you transition off instruments to the visual. I was so amped up to continue to try to get a green pass. Uh, the, the day before I had gotten, I thought it was a green uh, okay pass, and it wasn't, it was a fair. I made one mistake in close that wasn't ter terrible, it was just an uncorrected mistake, so that instantly knocks it down. It's a very, very, very disciplined, yeah. strict grading system. So I was really pressuring myself to get a green pass this night. And night it was a nice, smooth night, and, uh, had a natural wind, so the winds were right down the angle deck. It wasn't a crosswind. And I was so focused on keeping that meatball in the middle that I lost uh, 
a lot, I dropped lineup out of my scan. You know, the scan when you're visual is meatball, lineup, angle of attack. I was so focused on that, I heard the LSOs say right for lineup, and it's a, it's a directive call. If they say right for lineup, you give a little wing dip, it means you're kind of drifting left. It's a 100-foot wide landing area, and the wingspan on my jet was 68 feet. Right? Oh, wow. So I gave him a little right for lineup, but I was so amped up, I, I apparently gave him too much. Oh. And the uh, right wing tip smashed into the flight deck, <gasps> and, uh, and I didn't know it. Now, this is a high wing jet, so it's a high wing airplane, and I hit the right wing tip on the deck, and thank God I was high. Uh, so I caught the four wire, and I landed, and everything was fine. I didn't even know I hit the, 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 flight, the flight deck with the wing. And, uh, and as I realized later what happened, I was very lucky because the right wing tip landed after the four wire, and the hook caught the So you were already landed. Wow. I, well, I was touching, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was touching I touched down with the right wing and the right wheel. And the point was, is my wingtip could have picked up the four wire and oh, things wow. would have been a lot different. So as it turned out, I didn't get a greeny. I didn't get a, <laughs> uh, a yellow. I got a black one, which was oh, called a, no. uh, a cut pass. It's an unsafe act inside the wave off window. So it was a humbling, humbling experience. Wow. Well, that positions you perfectly for Air Safety Institute. So. Well, I guess it taught me uh, to moderate some of the pressure we put on ourselves. Right. Well, no, and, yeah. that, and that's oh, what I mean. Yeah. Like, I, I say that somewhat jokingly, but I'm being serious, is yeah. that you were able to take that and learn from yeah. it. You were one of the, quote, unquote, survivors of incidents, yeah. if you will, and you could talk about how you apply the learning lessons moving yeah. forward. Yeah, it was a good learning experience for a young Navy lieutenant, and, uh, you know, it's very... Uh, very much a pressure world because your grades are published and yeah, you get a lot of grief from your buddies. And, and I, I ended up uh, riding the pine for a couple of days. I, I didn't fly for a couple of days. <laughs> what That's was fair. your call sign? Uh, well, my last name is Ginter, G-I-N-T-E-R, and uh, the call sign is Gintac, which is the Ginter tactic. I invented a tactic uh, to <laughs> deliver a certain weapon that we had, uh, which was very... Uh, Sarcastic. It was a it was a fake right. tactic, but it was funny. And uh, anyway. so you earned Gintac. Yeah, I just I nice. invented something. I, I kind of got in a little trouble one day in class when I when I offered this ridiculous tactic, and <laughs> all my buddies thought it was funny, and I, I got talking to. So. <laughs> all right. Well, it's, all right. Let's transition now through to the Air Safety Institute. And um, uh, speaking of lessons learned and everything else, I know the AOPA. I, I was watching some of the videos. You guys did a massive. Um, group flyover Washington D.C. a few months ago. Um, tell tell us about that. So it was called the National Celebration of General Aviation Flyover, mm -hmm. and it was to celebrate 85 years of what general aviation has brought to this country. Uh, anybody that flies GA in the United States uh, hopefully knows that what we have is special. Nobody else in the world has the freedom to fly like we do. Yeah. Or the, we don't have the user fees. We don't have, uh, you know, really restricted airspace like they do in some other countries. So it's worth protecting, and it's a story that needed to be told to the general public. The general public needs to know, uh, and we want them to know, that small airplanes don't crash every time they take off, even though they just finished watching air disasters, right? Or just social media right now. Yeah, yeah. and not or every news. airplane is going to get repoed, and not every airplane has a snake on a plane. Right. So. Because that's what's out there in public. And, and the truth is, we're flying 30 million flight hours a year in small airplanes, general aviation. And the accident rate has been driving, been driving down since the 90s. It's, it's never been safer than it is now. And yeah. it's a good story to tell. So we told that story in the general aviation flyover. And uh, we had Tom Haynes and Miles O'Brien as our, our anchors and right. broadcasting from a rooftop. And we worked very closely with uh, government regulators for about... 15 months. Wow. And we had 11 agencies that had to say yes. Any of them could say no. And that's what the planning time took so much to do. And in the end, it was 55 airplanes. And we went right down Independence Avenue at 1,000 feet. And all that's the amazing. waivers were there. And Secret Service flew with this. And the FISDO did the ramp checks. And the TSA did the airplane checks. I mean, it was very, very regulated and overseen. But in the end, uh, all the government planning partners couldn't have been happier, and we were elated. And, and America got a nice little shot of what general aviation is from 1939 to the present. Wow. Any safety takeaways from a group fly like that? Well, to plan it, uh, it had to be planned in such a way that the most restricted airspace in the world, uh, and frankly all the cameras and guns pointed at us, had to be... Uh, 
had to be dealt with. We had to fly through restricted airspace and get waivers and permissions and exemptions for the experimental aircraft. Um, the safety takeaways were the planning had to be so simple and basic that it was easy to execute by any GA pilot. The pilots we selected mostly were because of the airplane they had told the story we wanted to tell for 15 different chapters. Seaplanes, experimentals, we had uh, public service aircraft, air, uh, rotor wing aircraft. Uh, Mark Baker led it in his stagger wing with nice. the, the golden age yep. of aviation chapter. So the safety takeaways were it had to be safe, it had to be executed perfectly, and perfect was an average performance, right? I mean, you right. Can't, there's no such thing as doing great. You had to be average. Average was meet the minimums and, and be safe. Right. So um, anyway, we, we planned it with lateral spacing. It was all timing. We had to be very specific about 1,000 feet uh, over uh, AGL. And uh, we ended up hiring Wayne, Wayne Boggs to be our air boss at Frederick nice. uh, Municipal Airport where all the airplanes were staged. And, and, and we had a very strict timing plan. They, they would put four airplanes on the runway of, of a chapter. And Mark Baker took off at exactly 11.38 on that Saturday, May 11th. And that timing of 90 knots and the speed and the distance put him at show center at 12.06. And he showed up at 12.06. It was beautiful. And we did that for all 55 airplanes. And it was, uh, it worked out great. All right, so at the top, I, I teased about um, general aviation accidents. You know, social media has made it seem like they're happening every hour, every minute. We're, we're constantly reminded. And so there's a perception that uh, we are crashing more general aviation airplanes than ever before. Is that true? Is it true that there's a perception? Yes, the perception's yes. <laughs> true, but it's not true. It is not true. It's not true. Uh, general aviation has never been safer. As I mentioned, we've, we're flying 30 million flight hours a year. It might be, I'm sorry, 26 million flight hours, 30 million takeoffs and landings. Okay. So uh, the flying activity has been increasing for six or seven years. The number of pilots is increasing. Okay, that's uh, great news. People are buying airplanes. More student pilots are coming in. Uh, so uh, the accident rate is at 0.75, I think, fatal accidents per 100,000 flight hours. And that is less than half of what it was uh, two, three decades ago. So, wow. So the accident rate is incredible. We are still crashing too many airplanes. Sure. At one crash is one too many. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're not learning new ways to do it, Dan. It's not, it's not like we're figuring out new ways to crash airplanes. Right. I mean, 42% of all mishaps, fatal, are due to loss of control. For whatever reason led to the loss of control, it's loss of control. And that includes uh, stalls? Stalls. It could, includes, uh, you know, loss of control and a takeoff, and maybe they mess things up, and, or a uh, landing, loss of control. But 42% of all fatals is loss of control. Wow. Yeah. We know that the Air Safety Institute reviews videos of accidents, but I, am, I understand that the Air Safety Institute also does other types of videos. Can you tell me about that? Sure, yeah. So we, uh, the primary way we reach general aviation is through our online content, and our content's viewed 10 million times a year, uh, by, nice. by, wow. uh, which means many more people than GA pilots are re reviewing the content. Yeah. I think there's 800,000 pilots in the country now. Which we love, we love that. But um, we uh, produce a, a video series called Early Analysis, mm -hmm. and um, it's a very uh, data-based and uh, no guesswork. Uh, we don't fill in the blanks. No speculation. No speculation, and it's all based on the facts. And we look at things that the NTSB might consider as they do their detailed investigations, and they're always very detailed. So I would say that the Early Analysis videos is very popular. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're actually bringing that back, okay. uh, so okay. that's coming back. We I do, wondered, yeah. We do uh, accident case studies, probably our flagship video. I love those. Yep. Those yeah. are my favorite. They take a little bit longer to produce, yeah. and uh, but they're incredible. And uh, another one is real pilot stories. Yep. We, we just did one called Crossed Wires. And, yeah, uh, watch that one. Yep. And, uh, and I'm going to bring back another one called Peak Performance. So I, I don't, I'm not familiar with that series. What is that? Well, so the first one was released last June. Okay. And, of course, we haven't done any since uh, right. Richard's mishap. But uh, 
Uh, it's a it's a video series that basically doesn't require an accident to happen before you talk about nice. safety and flying. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But it, it's a it's a genre of general aviation that requires really peak performance to do safely. It's complex. It's high. It's high stress. It's demanding. It might be agricultural crop dusting or uh, Richard did one with the AT802 fire boss. Wow. Okay. Uh, so fire fire attack. Uh, so just this morning, I flew with the Titan Aerobatic team, and oh. we're going to produce a video uh, maybe in a month or two. It'll come out, but it's going to be on operating at peak performance. And let me tell you, having just done a loop and a barrel roll and a wing over in a four-ship or a three-ship formation, so it's not just a warbird. It's not just aerobatics. It's a warbird aerobatics in very tight formation. That's amazing. And it's it's... It was eye-opening. I mean, it's you'll see the video. It's uh, you know, it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited to see <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> and these guys are such gentlemen too. They're they they're almost like breathing together. They're so good at what yeah. they're doing. 38 years they've been doing this. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to uh, watching that. And um, is that what's called a tease, Dan? That is a tease. So. Uh, <laughs> We'll try to include a link to it as well okay. once it's out. Yeah, sure. So, well, Mike, I really appreciate you taking your time, um, and and congratulations on the new job. Thank and you. we wish you all the best, and and that safety continues to increase and accidents mm -hmm. continue yeah. to decrease. We wanna we wanna keep everybody alive and safe because general aviation is so much fun. It, we, you know how it is. We're passionate about it, right? Yep. And uh, it's worth uh, doing right, and it's worth yep. doing safely. So if we can help GH stay safer, that's what we want to do. It's important stuff. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and visit our sponsors like ZVision, the brightest landing taxi lights out there, uh, Marshall Protective Services, mpsprotects.com, 67design, 67d.com for the best camera mounts, and uh, Colton Mortgage. And Colton Mortgage, coltontakingoff.com. <laughs> we'll see you next time. In the hangar. <laughs>